What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Shee Tabor. We're going to be talking through this week 11 of the NFL slate. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't quite get there this last week. I felt pretty good about the process and I just didn't I didn't quite find anything that that I could that I committed to the right way. And that was basically to, to try to play Justin Fields naked. Um, with nobody and that's something I haven't done in major tournaments in a while and that would have uh, would have been good enough I guess you could have done them with just commit and been okay but my fields lineups all had Mooney or Claypool and things like that in there which which you didn't have but on to this week uh, sheets any overall thoughts before we jump into game by game yeah it's ugly um, there was only like two two um, games where the totals over 50 and one of them involves the Atlanta Falcons um, and and when I look at, you know, the, the the stacks and the teams that are rating to be be good for good for me, it it it's looking really really ugly. That's my um, that's my that's my initial look at the slate. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll we'll see. I mean, we'll we'll see what we like here. But um, it's you're gonna, I think you're gonna be playing playing teams that you might I don't know, maybe maybe we'll want to play. I don't know. I, I I think it's there's no real standouts. I guess it does in a way make it a good GPP slate. I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, uh, when you get to the teams that I like the most, it's going to be really awful. Yeah. It's, it's, a it's definitely a weird week. It's a, it's kind of been, it feels like there's been a lot of them this year that, that just feels like the whole slate is like, ah, this is kind of gross. I wish I'd almost just played like the other three games that are on the Thursday, Monday, Sunday right. night slates. Right. Um, all right, well, let's, let's, let's jump into it. Um, first game off, uh, Chicago, Atlanta. This is, uh, this is, you know, one of those games with that total that you mentioned and, yeah. Justin Fields is now at an appropriately priced 7,600. Uh, I think if everyone is going to jump off of him, I have absolutely no problem going right back to him. I have, he's, his early projections are showing up as pretty low for the week, and I have no problem going right back to him. Uh, I also don't mind uh, without – we have we have no uh, – no, what's his name this week? No, Herbert, which I think is a, a pretty good bump to Montgomery, and I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some interest in him as well. Um, I will take more of my shots on, on Mooney and Claypool, but I think that, uh, I think Komet is still in that. I mean, people just really hate playing this guy and maybe he's finding something with him. Three touchdowns over the last two games. Um, so Fields, Montgomery, Komet, um, and then Mooney or Claypool, I think makes for a nice little, uh, nice little stack. If you run it back with a very tough team to run anything back with, uh, Kyle Pitts, Drake London both look great from a point per dollar standpoint. This team runs the ball so much and they use three running backs. So it makes it really hard to play any of them. So I, um, maybe you could say, Hey, this is the week quarter Patterson gets going again, but they, they just want to run the other guys a lot. It feels like. So I have it, uh, Pitts then London on the run back. And I am not as interested in Mariota as everyone else is. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm not really getting to either side of this. Um, really? I, I, yeah. I'm not uh, ready for this. This is one of the games for me. Well, it's yeah, really. Uh, yeah, it's one. Of, I mean, it's got a high total, but I think I think you hit it on the head for me. Is that the the Atlanta side of it is so gruesome? You know, and they just run the ball so freaking much um, that it just kind of just sucks all the life out of the game. You know, um, but yet on the other hand, you do have fields who essentially just like just like just each, you know, just to generates fantasy points every day. I think because like you said, his price is up to 7,600 or wherever it is that the team is just not overall projecting really well. Um, but like you said, also that, that means I think he's going to be lower owned. He's going to be low owned this week, especially in stacks. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm currently not getting to them right now, but like, I mean, if, if they are going to be low owned as a result of all that, it's going to be hard for me to not play them. But, but currently at this point, at this particular look, I don't really have either of them in my top six or seven. Yep. Um, I hear you. We'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I understand. I just, I can't, I can't, you know, I, I, I see a high total and on a slate with no totals and, and no one playing the Chicago side of it. Yeah. I, I kind of, kind of, am going to probably get a little bit involved in that. Um, uh, and by the way, you could just run Montgomery too if you don't want to do a full stack of that. I like that call, by the way. I didn't realize that Herbert was out. Um, yeah, and he's going to. He and again, I mean, we we just saw Foreman twice. You know, what does he run for in two games against Atlanta? He ran for three hundred and twenty yards and four touchdowns. Why can't uh, we see a big week from Montgomery? If Fields doesn't snake too many touchdowns. All right, uh, Carolina, Baltimore. This uh, my initial thought on this one. 
is I love Baltimore in general. I still think Carolina, other than they had the one really crazy defensive game where they just got crushed by, by Cincinnati. I think their defense is good enough to keep them in games enough. And I'm always interested in a, in a Lamar to Andrews stack, but nothing that that's really a priority for me on this slate here. I think that Deontay Foreman is interesting at nobody's playing him. I keep talking about this guy. I think he's actually good. And I would, I would be willing to take a chance on him at 5,900. It's a pretty reasonable price allows you to do a lot of other things. And then I, at the same time, you have a secondary that's been killed a lot of the season and why not, why not DJ Moore and, and Mark Andrews? Um, so that's sort of what I'm looking at, but I don't think I'll do a stack here unless I just decide, you know what? I always like to have one, one Lamar stack just cause he can break a slate on his own. So that's pretty much where I am here. How about you? Yeah. I would make sure that Andrews plays. I mean, they, um, and he hasn't played in a couple of weeks, I think. And, um, He's, they say he's up op, they're optimistic that he's looking better for this week but mm-hmm. we'll see um I mean they're a hundred point favorite I, I wouldn't push him if, if if they don't have to um right but I like uh, I like DJ Moore in this game uh from Carolina uh he's pretty pretty game script proof I think in this particular game uh, yeah. uh if it's close it's because he's having a good game and if it's not close he's gonna have a good game in the third and fourth quarters you know what I mean mm-hmm. uh I, I like him he's my favorite play in the game and um, any interest in Baker Mayfield? No, or no, I don't yeah. even know that he's going to end up. I don't, I don't, know I don't even know what happens with that, to be know. honest with you. Um, uh, and Lamar is just too expensive for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, the, the one thing I would say is that if there's one guy who, who, you know, one, one other thing you could do in this game that, that feels weird and wrong, but if you play the Baltimore is going to be playing from a head thing, um, I would get a tiny bit of exposure to LaVisca Chenault. They're using him more often. They even use him in the running game a little bit. It's just, he's the, he's the, the, I have him on, on a list I'm now creating called my, just, just for the like 150 max type of entry things. You know what I mean? Not if you're entering 150, but at tournaments where people can enter 150, a guy like Chenault at 3,700 will be on that list for that. I guess I'll put it that way. All right, uh, let's move over. And the next one we've got is Cleveland and Buffalo, which feels like it's the game that we're supposed to go after. It doesn't look like it's going to be very pretty weather. Cleveland has a very low total for a team that still, I believe, has some pretty decent offensive talent. This game, you know, I've got to double check what the weather goes because this this feels like the total feels really low to me. It does, right? Yeah. So uh, assuming there's bad weather, then then maybe, maybe it's not what we want to do. But I, I'm definitely open to... In general, though, I, I always prefer uh, Lamar to Josh Allen. I actually think, this, I know it sounds weird to say, I think the ceiling is higher. Um, and he's already put up 40 a number of times, you know. Uh, but look, a, a digs, an Allen to dig stack, uh, running it back with uh, uh, either Peoples Jones or Amari Cooper. I'm 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 good with that. Uh, I don't know that in this matchup I want to play Nick Chubb or Kareem Hunt. So that's pretty much all I have here. I think Donovan Peoples-Jones is really cheap um, for yeah. this game. Uh, you know, Buffalo is an eight-point favorite. You know, not that it's easy to pass on Buffalo, but, you know, uh, they're, they're, Cleveland's going to be passing on Buffalo. They just are. Yeah. Um, and 4600 for Peoples-Jones is just a good price. Um, yeah, the, the, the total on this kind of surprised me too. But then, even in spite of the total, I'm still getting to Buffalo as one of the top three stacks. Yep. Um, so, uh there's that. I'm actually getting to Cleveland also. Um, so I guess this is, you know, this is one of those. Uh, I think I think you can game stack this. It's not it doesn't feels a little dirty with that total. And it feels a little dirty considering. I don't know. You know, I had the same speech last week. Remember I said last week, Buffalo was coming off a loss to the Jets. I said, oh, Buffalo is going to hammer Minnesota and all this stuff. And lo and behold, now they're off two losses. <laughs> it's right. like, um, so, but I'd like to think that they're, you know, step up against against Cleveland but I don't know uh I I, uh, I think this is a good game to stack I think you could play I don't think I want to play the Brissett quarterback side of it I would use the receivers yeah. though um yeah. as kind of the run back so I play Allen with Diggs I mean nothing fancy you want to play Dawson Knox play him um and uh Peoples Jones I think is the, is the is the imaginably popular but he's he's the cheapo here yeah, he's not showing up very much in terms of his projection is is pretty low, which okay. I think they're just they're they're worried about the they must be worried about the, there must be some more wind in this game or something. We'll see, of course. Or the fact that Buffalo usually has a really good defense. Yeah, but and and that's fair enough as as well. But um, 
but 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 you know we've seen teams score on buffalo uh too even with that defense and if i do like to use a receiver against them it's usually going to want to I, I prefer the secondary receiver so uh people's jones does show up um i think if Njoku plays he's in the mix and i think dawson Knox in your buffalo stacks if you're going to make them but i agree that buffalo is a, a, on this kind of a slate i think i might even go back and, and include in my mix some uh some baltimore stacks just because there's not a whole lot to feel incredible about. And I, I'll take the guys who can combine for 70 fantasy points between Diggs and Allen and, and on the, likewise with uh, Andrews and, and Lamar. I think that's, that's definitely an interesting way to go because it just, there's just not a whole lot to love. All right. So I want to, I want to talk about this next game a little bit. Yeah. Um, start off. Well, I want to talk from football and life and perspective. So I want, I want to talk about this Washington Philadelphia game from, from the other day. Okay. Um, so I thought that I thought that was an awesome thing that happened. Okay. Do you mind pulling and, up your screen real quick, Sheets? Oh, I thought it's been up a little bit. Oh no, no, no problem. No, sorry, I didn't notice oh. it until just now. Okay. Um, but, but but go ahead. I want to hear what your, your thoughts. So are. I want to talk about this Washington Houston game, but, but I want to talk about the Washington Philly game from last week or this Monday because because I this is this is I, I I really like when players kind of show out when nobody really pays attention to them in general and they show it on the field and off the field and all this stuff. So listen, Washington came up with a great game plan. They basically took it to Philly the whole game, right? And I don't care about the calls and all that freaking bullshit, okay? Washington outplayed them literally the whole game okay? um, with no quarterback pretty much. And 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 a good part of, of why they were able to do it is, is the running game. But let me tell you about Terry McLaurin, okay? So so Terry McLaurin has been suffering in this offense for like forever. And and, and he put – he – had a really, really nice game. I don't even know if he got a touchdown either, but he had a really, really nice game. That's for openers. Mm-hmm. Second of all, like in the locker room, I don't know if you saw this clip, in, in, in the locker room afterwards, um, what's his name? Uh, Coach Rivera, he he just lost his mother this pa- that past week. Mm-hmm. So he was trying to give like a speech and after the game speech was obviously the biggest win for him ever and the biggest win for Washington of, in like a long time, like going into Philly like that, yep. get, beating an 8-0 team. And he couldn't even get through like his speech without without crying. But then Terry McClure just totally just like took over the locker room, you know, to give Rivera a break and, 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 and broke the whole game down. Just so awesome. And then McClure went and did an interview with, with, with Scott Van Pelt um, on ESPN where they, they asked him some stupid loaded question. Oh, so what do you think about the quarterback country? You know what I mean? Like, listen, you know what I mean? Like, what do you think about Terry McClure when Wentz comes back? And he just answered the question totally perfectly. You know what I mean? So it was really the day of Terry McClure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so good for him. Um, with that said, uh, Houston's a lock in this game against the spread. I knew you were going to say that. Obviously. <laughs> um, and, and, and may as well just go ahead and play Damian Pierce if, if that's going to be the case. Um, hopefully Damian Pierce burned enough people this past week that people won't play him this week, but people are too smart for that. He's still going to show up as a great play. Um, but I like that. I like the Houston defense. Um, and just for fun, I mean, you probably should have McClure in some lineups um, just, just out of respect. But I do like Pierce. I like Houston. I like Houston defense. Yeah, I agree. I agree with a lot of what you said, actually, right there. I, I actually think that I've been saying this this year, that I think Washington is a different team with Heineke. Uh, I think they're much, much tougher to, to play against, and it helps their running game, too. It worries me how much they're going to try to run the ball, especially against a team that can't stop the run. Makes me want to play some of these guys. But when you look at the, 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 the shakedown, Gibson had 14 carries. Brian Robinson had 26 carries. Dude, they were leaning on Brian Robertson. I mean, yeah, and it just feels like, okay, like, you know, look, Jeff Wilson won all the money for everybody last week, and and Mostert also had a big game. One of these guys, you know, I definitely think are, are we should at least consider both of them. I still am giving the, the little bit of the edge to Gibson, but I don't know, man. It's really tough when you have the split backs, but if you're going to run it freaking 40 times, um, of course, you need to be ahead and all that stuff like they were in the last one. Um, I, I think the price on Terry McLaurin is – uh, a little bit offensive, to be honest. Um, I think he's a, he's a he's a really talented receiver, and I wouldn't be surprised if he had a, a like a, one of those monster game suits. He was really good last week. He had you know eight for one one twenty eight on on Monday night. Um, but I you know with Dotson back, this is actually like a pretty competent receiving core with Samuel Dotson and and McLaurin and Dotson in the number one pick or the the first round pick this year. Um, so I kind of I, I can get into this game a little bit, but mostly it'll be Pierce with with one of the running backs, or I would take a shot with uh, Dotson or, or Samuel. I think Dotson is another one of those play a million lineups, kind of a play. He, he maybe makes the, you know, play the one fifties and, and maybe he makes it there, but, uh, but definitely not a, not a terrible game considering uh, on this, on this kind of a slate, at least we don't have to worry about weather. 
And you know what else? Just to put a put a tap or bow on this Washington thing. Listen, Washington's obviously the, the franchise has had like immense problems yeah. like on, on many levels. Um, and even even they interviewed Heineke, and they, they I don't know what they try to bait these people. Like, so what do you think is going to happen when Lynch comes back? You know, whatever you think you deserve the job or whatever. Like, and he said the right thing. He said it's like, no, yeah. Listen, I'm gonna do the best I can. If I'm backing up Wentz, that's fine. The Carson, that's fine too. You know, whatever it is. But I mean, you know what? Just stop being a pain in the ass. Not yeah. you. I mean, I mean, I mean the, the media. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Um, uh, and by the way, probably worth noting since all the Dan Schneider stuff came up about a month ago. Uh, I guess it was five weeks ago. They were four and one. Washington. There it is. They've been on fire. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, but but I but I, I agree. I think Houston's very live here, and and I think this is a game I might end up considering stacking later in the week. But right now, I still have it as a as a side note. Just just the running a running back piece or a wide receiver piece here and there. Uh, all right, uh, Indiana, Indianapolis, and Philly. You have sort of the uh, the two opposite type of team. One plays really fast. One plays really slow. One's really good. One's really bad. Um. I'm not finding this as a, from a projection standpoint to be a very interesting game, but I, I don't know. You, you do have no, it's, it's just who they're going to use Jack Stoll or this Calcaterra guy, because you have no, uh, no tight end. Uh, and you have one of the better tight ends on your, you know, on your roster usually. So it should open things up for both receivers and it should open things up for the other tight end at 2,500. So uh, Philly is, you know, in that way, kind of, kind of interesting to me. And, 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 Look, you're going to start Matt Ryan. You're going to go back to that. At least we have a guy who who has had some success with Pittman, and Jonathan Taylor had a good week last week. He's still 7,800. So I I I think this is an interesting game, and especially because Philly's not getting any ownership. Maybe you do it without the quarterback because Hertz is so expensive, but you could still play you know AJ Brown or Devonte, and then you run it back on the other side with uh, Taylor or or Pittman. Kind of like that. All of that actually. How about you? Yeah, I, I would like some value to open up because I, I I definitely want to play this. I want to play Hurts. I want to play – listen, A.J. Brown, I don't know if you noticed, he was hurt in this yeah. past. Um, he came off the field hurt, and then he, he kind of walked on the field, but you knew that he was hurt. I mean, he was either on as a decoy or just because he was just too proudful to to say he was hurt. At, you know what I mean? He, that was not A.J. Brown. So uh, I would expect him to have a bounce back game. Uh, listen, the whole team coming off a loss is probably going to – probably going to be pretty motivated um, in a dome, good, good, good weather and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, so I, I would try to get that. And I would try to get Pittman in on the other side. Um, I don't think that Philly's going to be giving up too many. Uh, listen, they, they, they got, they got obliterated in the running game by, by Brian Robinson and, and what's, and what's his name and, and Gibson between the two of them. I think they're going to, I don't think that's going to happen again. I, I wouldn't play Taylor in this spot. So um, I would, I would play the Philly side. I could run it back with Pittman um Paris Campbell finally did something he got a yeah yeah and I think he's reasonable by the way this week yeah so I like that uh, I'm not I don't think I'm gonna play those cheapos uh the cheapo tenants for Philly I'm gonna just I'm just gonna presume it all goes to AJ Brown and, De- and Devontae Smith and just uh mm-hmm. just, just roll with that yeah and uh it's kind of a weird matchup too because like Philly's been good against the uh, Indy's been good against the pass and not so good against the run but that's mostly because they've been losing in every game so people are just running it on them um but but I could see, I could see getting this game as a stack. I'm going to put it as a put it up there because I I also think Campbell and Pierce in the in the large like Campbell Pierce and and uh, Watkins I'll I'll go on my my 150 max type of things this week and I actually might consider Campbell a little bit better than those other guys. Um. All right, the Jets and New England sheets. What do you got here? Right. So first of all, New England's only favored by three over the Jets. They some people are out of their mind. So obviously the Jets are a lot. Um, so, so Jets plus three, uh, certainly against the spread and everything else for me is just probably a pass in this game. Um, I guess you can make the case for Ramondre Stevenson again. I mean, cause they, listen, New England is favored and they are at home and, and, and Stevenson gets most of the work, but I think a Jets defense is stout. Um, so I'm probably just off the whole. Yeah. I'll go back to Stevenson, especially if Harris is out, which he's questionable. Um, if he's in, they're going to give him some carry. So it'll lower my, my interest. I also think that the over is very live in this game too. The Only Jets 38 have, or something, right? Yeah. The Jets have scored points. I mean, like this isn't, this isn't the Jets of old that had no, have nothing going for him. Garrett Wilson is probably the the standout for me at 4,900. That's just too cheap. I don't, I mean, I, I don't care who you're going against. That guy's got massive upside. 
He's probably the best under 5K wide receiver we have in this slate. Um, so I, I kind of like the idea of playing Garrett Wilson. I'm not sure if it's time to click the uh, the James Robinson button yet, but I did consider it this week. Um, Tyler Conklin, maybe. Hunter Henry, maybe on the other side. I, I don't think I really want to get heavily involved. I think mostly it's either Stevenson or and Garrett Wilson for me. That's pretty much where I'm at here. All right. Next one we've got up is let me move screens. Rams versus Saints. Rams Saints. Jeez, talk about an ugly game. Well, um, if you tell me that that um that the that you can run on the Rams nowadays, I would say Kamara is a good play. Um, I don't know what the Rams are doing nowadays. So uh, you have to tell me that. But Kamara looks like a good play and really nobody else for me on either side of this of the field. Yeah, I don't I don't have a whole lot of interest. I, I feel like we're supposed to do something with the Rams, right? Like yeah. no Cooper Cup should be some kind of news. Um, yeah. Van Jefferson at 4,500 is, I wish he was 3,500 again. Uh, I think the answer is probably Tyler Higby. And the answer is probably on the other side, uh, the aforementioned Alvin Kamara. That's that's pretty much what I have here, and don't don't really love this game very much at all. Um, still feels like a low total, but the Rams haven't been able to do anything with Cooper Cup. I don't know why we're going to assume they're going to without him. So, uh, yeah, it's just basically those guys for me. Uh, I, I do think Higby will be a will be a guy I look to a lot this week. Um, even though I hate taking them against the Rams, it's just the price. I think that I think Cups you know, second favorite target has got to be looked at when we have no, you know, the highest usage receiver in the NFL. So we have to look at somebody, but uh, I like Kamara too. I, I don't love him. I think it's, I think it's a good play, not a great play. I actually have uh, Jonathan Taylor a little bit ahead of him, but it's, it's, it's fine with me. And and I'm not, not touching the, the passing game for, for new, new Orleans in this one, especially because we don't know who the hell it's going to be um, at this moment. So. All right, your Giants and 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 uh, Detroit to start this one off here for us. Giants rolling on at six and two. Uh, Unbelievable. And, and a Philly that loss on the and a, Philly, and a Philly loss on the books. Yep. And a Philly loss on the books, and we get Detroit at home. You know. Yep. Chalk it up. You know what I mean. And and mm -hmm. I'll say something else. You know why, why should the uh, why shouldn't the Giants get to benefit from the uh, from from Detroit's defense? Now, with that said. I mean, Detroit has been uh, has been sneaky. <laughs> I mean, like they've been, they they they've been they were sneaky against Green Bay, but in this last game against uh, Chicago, totally delivered sixty one points. Um, so I, I have I have a I have a sucker bet for you if you want. So this is I, listen. This is one of those that, that people play them. If he's like more than five percent owned. It's like the worst play ever. But if he goes up at two percent owned and he scores thirty fantasy points, you're you're just gonna kill yourself. <laughs> I know who you're gonna say. Yeah. So, so can Kenny Galladay. Can we do it? I don't know if we can do. It. Is playing the Lions. Uh, <laughs> so, so I know he's gotten just no action, and when he's gotten action, he's gotten no targets and no nothing. Um. So I'm just I'm just gonna just tell everybody that he played for the Lions. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm not saying any. There's no other reason to play him. Um. Let's start with other guys. So, so Saquon Barkley seems pretty expensive at eighty nine hundred. If you want to know the truth, um, I don't. I don't know if I can get to him at that price. He rates to be a good play, but I just, in the absence of a lot of other value, I don't know if I can pay that. Um, no, I mean, even I, when he goes off, like he's not getting quite enough for you, which is crazy. And he goes off like every. He's great every week, but I'm with I, you. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be more inclined to do something with Darius Slayton in the passing game. Maybe you know, maybe a. Uh, Daniel Jones and Slayton and uh, whoever else looks good. Maybe Wandell Robinson or something like that. That's one thing you can do against Detroit as pass too. So I would, um, I, I would take a shot with the Giants offensive stack and just because it's so easy to run back with, with, uh, with, with St. Brown. Um, and you can also, again, you can run back with the other one with Khalif Raymond, if you feel like you need to, but I think, I think it's pretty legitimate. The, the only thing is, is the weather, the weather doesn't look like it's going to rain or whatever, but it's going to be cold. If that means anything, it's be very cold for the next week. I mean, like in the yeah. maybe in the 30s or 40s. Um, that doesn't really affect things too much. But you get St. Brown at 7,200, which is, I guess, pretty reasonable. I mean, for that for for a, possibly a pretty good game script. Um, so yeah, I I, I kind of like this. 
Giants not getting a lot of respect. They're seven and two and they're three point favorites at home against Detroit. Um, that's a little, doesn't that seem a little fishy? You know, the, po- the power ratings across the, across the industry, they're like, like 26. Yeah. But like they're, they're three point favorites against the lions at home. Well, I know that's, that's what I'm saying. They get no respect anywhere. That's what I'm, I don't know if anybody else would only be three point favorites against the lions at yeah. home. That's just so weird to look at. Yep. Um, I, this is what I have for this game. I, I have this as a game stack and I have no idea who I want to play. Um, <laughs> I, I, I want to take a shot with Daniel Jones, but I have no receiver that I feel comfortable with. Look, I'll take the the, the Galladay thing. Um, I think it was Dean Dean from uh from from RG who who I think he had a two hundred with with Galladay in his lineup. I mean, all you need is that oh. Christian Watson swap, and you and you win. Oh. You know? um, and then you can, then you can quit Roto Grinders the next day. <laughs> yeah, seriously, that's like uh, that would have been a million bucks right there. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's the I, I want to stack this game. I, I think St. Brown is the, the most obvious play in the game. I think Jamal Williams. I like the idea of Darius Slayton. Barkley's really expensive, so it's going to be hard to get to him. And Wandale Robinson and, and Slayton, it's hard for me to, to differentiate between the two, except for that at least I've seen Darius Slayton put up some games. Um, yeah. I'm a little surprised that the Robinson projects a little bit better. But I, I just know that I want to stack every game the Lions are in every week in at least a portion of my lineups, and this will be no different, even though – What happened to DeAndre Swift? They, he's, they were playing him banged up, and Jamal Williams is really taking the role. So Jamal Williams yeah. is, is right there, too, for me. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. I don't want to say that I prioritize it yet because I, I'm still very up in the air on this one. Um, I, I think all of these guys are it, – it, it's a game that, that every time the Lions play could go off. And, and the Lions are sneaky in that they can score quickly. So if if you get a Lions, you know, playing from ahead kind of a thing, and you have the Daniel Jones passing game with 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 Williams or Saint or Saint Brown on the other side, I could definitely see you getting there with this one. So I, I'm going to keep this one on my list for now. All right, so I got to talk to you about this next game. So oh, so gosh. this is this is this is this is the football gods like really really trying to punish me. Okay, so last week I went out of my survivor pool with, with Vegas. Right, it was a it was kind of game. I had a shot at the end that they stole out the ten yard line, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and um, they're in Denver, and and for for some obscure reason, they're showing up as my top overall stat. Oh, it's wow. like it's like beyond ridiculous. I think I think the reason why is because every week it's just it's just Foster Moreau just just projects to be such a good point for dollar play. I guess mm-hmm. that that's why they keep showing up. But that's what I'm getting right now is 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 Car Adams Moreau as something you want to do. And listen, if you do want to do that, you can at least uh, be uh, be safe that you have Sutton as a run back. Um, Judy, oh, he's not out. I thought there was a chance he was going to be out. Uh, he's probably going to play, whatever. So listen, I, I can't imagine the last right time. Now. What? I have Judy as out. No, it says here that he is not expected to miss extended time. So I don't know what that means. Um, yeah. I just see him on, on a couple of different on the NFL website. Um, he's project they've, they've been projected out. So, so I will say this, I don't, I can't recall since I've been doing DFS playing a stack in Denver. You know what I mean? Like I can't, can't imagine that being, being optimal, but that's what I'm getting for now. And uh, we'll just have to see how that kind of plays out. Yeah, this is interesting to me. Um, these teams have a history of playing really tight games and really high scoring and really low scoring games. They're they're all over the map. They, it's like either 17-14 or 41-28, 41-38. Um, Josh Jacobs is getting a little more love than I would have imagined in this matchup. Yeah, I have him as okay, but nothing that great. I mean, yeah, um, I, I don't I don't really know entirely why. I guess he's he's fine. Um, I, I think that if if there is no Judy, I will be all over Cortland Sutton and Kendall Hinton um, will get some ownership from me as well. Uh, I, I think you can go back to the Raiders passing game with uh, Devontae Adams, um, Matt Collins, and potentially getting really thin with Keelan Cole. But I don't really know how much I, I have a hard time. He got time in. I, I had him in, I had him in the uh, in the afternoon slate and he got in. He got like one target. And he dropped the ball. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think your best plays in this game on his face is the tight ends, but I'm always going to have interest in Devontae Adams at no ownership. And uh, for what it's worth, I like the Raiders to win this game. And as of right now, I might change my mind by Sunday, but I, uh, I, I really, it, it's so tempting every time you look at it with set with to, to stack up a really cheap Denver side for me, especially against the Raiders. But this offense is just disgusting. Um 
look, all they need takes is one good week. Right. But I mean, they're projected to score more points. They even scored 22 points this year in a game. Like, I don't know. It, it feels like I could see stacking it. And mostly I think I want to cross it off. There's nobody outside of Sutton and Hinton that I'm looking at as pieces. And that's only if Judy's out um, and they would be pieces for my, uh, for, for non-game stacks, but I don't love it. All so right. Dallas is coming off of a, just a terrible choke job at, uh, against Green Bay. Minnesota is coming off the most ridiculous game of the year uh, with a, with they won in Buffalo. So obviously Dallas is a lock on the road at Minnesota. But aside from that, uh, there is stuff to do in this game. Uh, starting with Tony Pollard, um, uh, I would go right back to him at 6,500, whether or not Zeke is active, I think. I, I, th- I don't know. I, 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 isn't, it, isn't it over for Zeke yet? I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Should be. Um, <laughs> but I like Pollard. And um, I also like the Dallas passing game here um, with what's his name with Lamb, uh, Prescott, Lamb. And you could either play – Schultz or or Gallup, um, and with well, Noah Brown's actually pretty cheap, also thirty seven hundred. And then um, I I thought Jefferson was too expensive last week. <laughs> Shows what I know. <laughs> that was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, but awesome. once again, I, I I guess I'd be a sucker and go back to Thielen and save the thirty six hundred. I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely think Dallas is live here. I think their offense is live, and uh, uh, that's about it. Minnesota basically rates as an average team in like almost every category with the exception of having a few exceptionals like, like Adam Thielen and now with Hawkinson and, and, and cook. But other than that, they're all their numbers are like basically average. And I agree. I, I think Dallas wins this game. Um, I, 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 I think all the receivers are, are certainly worth noting CD uh, Thielen Jefferson, like this is a game stack, especially if Zeke is out uh, Pollard uh, probably won't get to cook. I don't like running against Dallas and I like both tight ends. So I, I think this is a spot where I feel like stacking it, but I'm not in love with playing either quarterback. Uh, however that works. And I, at the same time, I think Dallas's defense is going to be trouble. So I, uh, for, for cousins, they just get enough pressure and uh, yeah, I, 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 but I, I have it as one of my favorite game stacks just partially because of the total, to be honest with you. So if you didn't like any, any of that, or any of all of that, this 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 last game is the winner. This I is agree. this is the one that wins all the money. Um, uh, Pittsburgh. So first of all, you get something rare. You get you get a Pittsburgh game at four o'clock. That doesn't happen too all too often. Mm-hmm. Um, you have you do you do have a couple of things. You have uh, I think TJ uh, whichever Watt it is that's back for Pittsburgh. He's back yep. last week. He looked good last week. Uh, yeah. First time these guys played was a wild game. Game one where remember C- Pittsburgh was winning and Cincinnati missed that an extra ugly. point to to win the game and then missed an overtime field goal to win the game. Pittsburgh ended up winning. Cincinnati's going to be bringing their bringing their A game to this game, and I think that there's points. Uh, I think that T Higgins and Tyler Boyd are both good plays on Cincinnati side. I think that Fryermuth and and uh, uh, Pickens and Pickett, obviously, and even Deontay jo- and Deontay Johnson are all good plays on the Pittsburgh side. And um, on a, on a slate where you know you don't have that many smash spots, I might just sit on my fat. You know what? And just kind of just backload the Pittsburgh Cincy game and just kind of kind of dare these dare these one o'clock games to come and get me a little bit. Uh, is I, is I really, this a I really real like thing that they they really put this on the slate? I don't understand. Oh, they put it at 125. I'm sorry. They moved the time. That's what happened. I've got this game at, at 825. That's why I was getting confused. Um, it's on the slate. That's really weird. That's okay. Well, no, no, no. It updated. That's really strange. Sheets, I like what you're saying here. I, I, I think this is the game I want to have the the interest in. And he didn't quite get there for me. He had a couple times at the one-yard line and then missed by one yard for the 100-yard bonus with Najee Ooh. Harris last week. Oh, Harris, right. Yeah, so I, I like this I like this game a lot. The Bengals just have the ability to put up a million points on anybody at any point. And I, yep. um, Pittsburgh's played a little better defensively the last few weeks, but you get some Pickens involved. You get some Deontay Johnson, some Harris, uh, Joe Burrow with the Higgins and Hayden Hurst or Boyd and Hayden Hurst or even all three of them. Or you throw Mixon even in the mix, he can, he can, you know, I, I just, I feel like everybody in this game is getting overlooked. I have to double check how much wind there is in Pittsburgh because it's a stadium that's definitely, I'm guessing the early total has to do with a wind projection because I haven't seen the bang. I know they had a, a tight game the first time, but the Bengals are a totally different team now. Um, and I think that this is a, 
I don't know. It feels like 40 feels a little too low, but um, unless there's major wind, I will be all over this game. I think it's my favorite game on the slate. Oh, we like that. Yeah. And it's going to be low on. That's part of why, but it's, it looks good to me. All right, let's go. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and how, and how, how in what way are we going to talk ourselves off? Of? That's, that's the only question. I know. I know. Um, I, I, I'm open to the picket thing, but I really want to play the, uh, the burrow, the burrow stack with, with, with Najee and, and one of the, the PPR guys, which Deontay Johnson would be probably a little, usually a little better for the PPR side of things. Pickens. Oh, you got to play Pickens, I think. I may, maybe, but I'm just saying they're going to keep looking for Deontay Johnson too. Um, but you could, you could go both ways. I, I really think that there, this is a really good game stack um, at low ownership, even though the total sucks. And unless there's a crazy amount of wind when it comes Sunday morning, I think I'm going to be all over this. Um, and I'll, I guess I'll just recap my, my plays and then. Well, hang on. You, I want to give a couple of defensive plays. Oh, sorry. Yeah. She's good. So my, my five defensive plays at this early juncture are, well, well, <laughs> happens sometimes Pittsburgh, <laughs> um, Vegas, New Orleans, um, the Rams on the other side of the game, and Houston. Yep. Um, I would include Dallas for me, yep. um, even though they're a little bit more expensive. And I would include Washington, but I agree with the rest yep. of the names you mentioned. Yep. Um, all right. So favorite for me, stacks, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Dallas, Minnesota, Giants and Detroit, Philly, Indy. And then maybe just the Buffalo sides of things, still considering what I want to do with this Atlanta Chicago game. Cause I'm starting to get nervous about that running thing. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like Chicago can just put up a ton of points right now and it feels weird not to play them in this spot in a dome. Um, it isn't in, in the dome. Yeah. Um, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, uh, Pierce, Hurst, St. Brown, one of this indie wide receivers, Pittman being the preferred one, Smith or Brown, if depending on how Brown looks for Philadelphia, Ramondre Stevenson, Garrett Wilson, Tyler Higby, and Alvin Kamara, uh, Tony Pollard, if no Zeke. That's for me, opinion. Vegas, Pitt, um, uh, Buffalo, Cleveland, Dallas. Uh, other guys that you didn't mention, maybe uh, you mentioned DJ Moore. Matt, Matt Collins for the Raiders. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, I'll reiterate that. A mm-hmm. um, couple of random tight ends maybe we didn't mention. We mentioned Fryer, we mentioned Pitts, we mentioned Schultz, we mentioned Moreau. Dulcich. Um, Looks okay. And running back, running backs is kind of thin this week. I don't really know what I'm going to do there. Pierce looks like the easiest one to me. Howard, certainly if Zeke is out, maybe if he's in. Kamara, I don't know. Uh, Jacobs, I don't know. Barkley, I don't know. always go back to your boy Mixon. I could, couldn't I? Yeah, it's only, you know, one week off of uh, uh, the the big nearly win and everything. Yeah, why not? Yep. yep. All right. Well, good luck to everybody this week. Uh, we'll be around. I'm going to do a show with uh, Goldie, who's also, I think, put up his own show that uh, he's nice. got going. And I nice. think that Rody and I will be recording as well later in the week and we'll be live 11 a Eastern Sunday. So Sounds good. Last one before the, for Thanksgiving. So uh, good luck, everybody. All right.